Hey devs and designers, welcome to the new video. In this video, I will talk about path tracing as you want. If you're ready, let's dive into it. Okay, so I'm in the same map as I used in the five different ways to improve your lightning video, which is if you didn't watch, you can watch from right side of the corner. So let's start, what is path tracing? Path tracing is a render technique like ray tracing, but a bit different. Actually, both of them try to simulate the way of lights behave in the real world. So you might ask, what is the difference between this path tracing and ray tracing? So let me explain. Ray tracing focuses only calculating the path of individual ways from the camera like simulating basing reflections and shadows for real-time rendering. Path tracing takes it further by considering to intricate path light can take bounces of surfaces, creating realistic global illumination and producing lifelike effects like caustics and color bleeding. Also, even ray trace bounds around the scene, path tracing doing the same thing too. Imagine standing in a room with a single light source. The light hits the surface and bounces off, illuminating the like, entire area. Path tracing carefully captures this phenomenon. When a right of light hits the surface, it doesn't just stop there, it bounces off, creating secondary rays that travel in new directions. These rays in turn interact with other surfaces, causing even more reflections and bounces. This iterative process results in the subtle interplay of light that gives scenes a sense of depth and realism. I will also talk about what is the actual difference between ray tracing and path tracing. Also, path tracing, like global illumination in general, and versus just direct lightning that we used before. But before that, I'm just going to show you how path tracing is working, how you can open from the Unreal Engine settings and how you can use it. Okay, so I'm in the same level that I used before. And I'm right now I'm only using a Lumen Global Illumination in the scene. So I'm just going to go to post-process settings, the path tracing that I tweaked a bit before the video. <laughs> So as you see, I'm using global illumination method Lumen, and also reflection method is Lumen too. So I'm just going to show you how it is changing the way of lights behave in the scene when I change the illumination method. So I'm just going to go to None. You see, it is changing incredibly different way. Let's make it None too. The reflections and general global illumination changes a lot of things in the scene. Right now I'm using, uh, when I close the global illumination method, it is still using a uh, movable light, which is I'm going to show you from direction light. As you see, it's movable. And I went to static. I need to bake the scene that I mentioned before when you're using just direct lightning without any global illumination and real-time rendering. After you tweak your light settings, you have to bake it every time when you change something, if it is static. So I think it's a, so not a good way to work on a, something like a good cinematic shot or something, because you're already using a, so high quality scenes and there's a, tons of different complex stuff in the scene, so if you even change it a little bit, for example, let's say this is a static, and when I move this, I need to render entire scene again. So I cannot say that I don't like static lighting so much, but for sure, if you're using for video games, it is pretty useful and it is better for computers. Like if you want that your game is must work in a much less stronger computer. Static lighting is still is the best solution. And it is also might give a better uh, results if you know what to do. And of course, it's uh, better for optimization. But 
we are just talking about real-time rendering in global illumination right now. I'm just going to go to post process again and I'm just going to change the lumen. And as you see, entire scene is changed. And I'm just going to go to direction. Let's just movable. Fix the problems. Okay. So how are we gonna open the path tracing? In here, just click the lid and you might see the path tracing. When you click this, the entire scene will be captured with path tracing. But if you don't see this, just go to file, just go to edit, project settings, go to all settings, and right here, Hardware ray tracing and click support hardware ray tracing, ray tracing shadows, ray tracing skylight, and path tracing. When you click on this, you might need to restart your project. And after that, you will see the path tracing uh, in here. I'm just going to get a camera that I handled before. I'm just going to tweak a bit. So, okay. And, okay, okay. So we are using 35 millimeter full aperture and 105 millimeter prime lens with F2 settings. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to here, lid, and I'm just going to click path trace. As you see, there's a, so much denoise in the scene right now, and it is calculating all light behaves in the scene. That's why I said path tracing is a pretty strong way to adjust the lightning and general looking of the scene. So uh, I still don't recommend to use for video games or any kind of uh, interactive entertainment project i think it's still good for movies cinematics and stuff like that mostly as you see it is taking so much time to render why because it is behaving so much different than ray tracing so in the post process settings in path tracing you can tweak all kinds of settings about path tracing in here. I'm just going to wait to finish. Okay, it finished and those scene rendered with ray tracing. But I'm just going to it again. As you see, it's changed pretty much. So I'm just not going to use any camera. I'm just going to use default. And in here, I will try to render this scene with path tracing. As you see, this bar is showing the status of the rendering process, by the way. When it's finished, the rendering process is finished too. Why this is taking that much long, which is I'm using an RTX graphic card? Well, because this is what path tracing is actually. Okay, I'm just going to show you something from the path tracing setting. As you see, there is something that max bounces. So you can change the bounce rate of the light traces in the scene and how many bounces will be when they came from the source. Let's change to eight. And there's also sample per pixel. As it says, set the samples per pixels for the path trace. When you decrease this, it will give you uh, faster results, but when it gets higher, it is giving more accurate and much better looking. I'm just going to make it like 300. And as you see, it is taking so faster than before. So we can tweak some settings from here. Uh, there's also a filter. It is, as it said, sets the anti-aliasing filter with for the path tracer, low values are sharper. Okay, let's make it this one, which is the lowest value for filter width.
it just changed the way of as it's anti-aliasing filter bit. Or it might be hard to see what is changing in the scene, but it can be pretty much different for different kind of scenes. Like if you're working on a scenes like a there's a so much like emissive lights, city lights and stuff. A big scene it can change a lot. I think you don't have to do something from path exposure from here. You can expose set your exposure set from post process settings too. The reference depth of field enables a reference quality depth of field which process effect. I didn't see it is changing so much thing right now, but it, reference atmosphere and I turn to false it is not rendering the atmosphere light which is coming from the skylight as you see it's just rendering the directional light but when I click on it is also rendering atmosphere too I will also show you that how you can use this path tracing in a movie render QQ too so we came to denoiser. Denoiser is also pretty crucial for uh, path tracing because when you're rendering the scene, there's a, being so much denoise, and when you finish, if there's not enough light, any kind of like emissive materials or stuff, it can be a bit like uh, noisy if you don't use any denoise. So I think right now there's two different denoise that you can use for path tracing in Unreal Engine that I will show you from plugins I'm going to write denoise one of them is open image denoise which is I think Unreal made it for the this path tracing and the other one is optic denoise which is an experimental package but it is made by NVIDIA's optics AI I think this optic denoise will be better in the future if you're using an RTX card but right now I'm using open image denoise. You can check your settings too if you're not using any of those. Uh, just make sure that you clicked on from here and restart the package. Also, there's lightning components that like MSF indirect MSF diffuse that you can close on. How you can use the path tracing in the movie render QQ, right? I'm just going to create a level sequence. I think this day. Seconds to show you. Here. And I'm just going to create a camera. Change this focal length eighty five point four. Weak a bit. Sure, we're rendering this. Okay, let's say you're going to render something with path tracing, but when you render just like a default like that, it will not render path tracing. The normal lit version that you're using. Again, when you click on here, you will see this page, which is render movie setting, but this is not what we want. So if you want to use a movie render QQ, just go to edit, plugins, and write movie render QQ, click on, and restart. I'm restarting too and coming back. Okay, I opened the movie render QQ and I come back. I also changed the curl focal length to 45 to make it bigger. So when you click on render settings, just go to setting, and in here, click on the setting, and you can add path trace. So when you add this, your all scene will be rendered with path trace. So in here, you can reference your motion blur, accumulator, includes alpha, which I don't use. Sample multi-sample effects. 
to render main paths, active players, and stuff. But if you want to tweak your path tracing settings before the render, you still have to do in your post process. Show you, for example, right now, or max balance is 8. I'm 20, 32, and I'm just going to change some to 1024. And I'm just going to wait until it's rendered the scene. As you see how the noiser is pretty much working when it's finished. Okay, so it's finished the render of the scene. So I'm just going to change path tracing to split and you will see the difference. It is obviously path tracing looks like a much more realistic than any other lightning thing. I'm going to put lit again. As you see, it is changing incredibly. Standalone ray trace is not a good example in here. But with lumen again, but path tracing is calculating every kind of different complex light behavior and bounces better than any kind of rendering technique for my opinion so if you're going to use path tracing in your shots you must know that it is takes much much longer time than rendering with default for example right now we have something like in five seconds uh scene in here and if you render this it's just based on your graphics cards for sure but for example, if you're rendering this scene in a two minutes with just default settings, it will render in a maybe 10 or 15 minutes with path tracing because it is much more complex way to render the scene. Also, there's also they call the Monte Carlo technique that path tracing using different than ray tracing, which is so basically the this race that coming from the source, just traveling around the scene and their bounces. But in this Monte Carlo technique that path tracing uses, it is working with randomness. So they are randomly going somewhere and hitting and going to an, another block and bounces from there too, which is we adjust this bounce rate from the post-process settings before. In ray tracing, it is still bounces, but in ray tracing, the old things coming from the camera actually, and it it is know that where it will gonna go, which is we adjusting the lights based on that, and it is working with that kind of understanding. But path tracing, it is taking completely different of this case, and it is trying to calculate the light with randomness like in the real life. I just made a little video about what is the path tracing and how we can use it, how we can open from the Unreal Legend settings. If you like it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can write your comments about path tracing. Maybe you know better so I can learn from you and other people who watch this channel learn too. I will I'm reading all your comments and I'm trying to reply more. So if you can if you can do it, it will be great. Until the next video, see y'all. I hope you all doing great work.